where the left and right come together for fundamental truths. AD on the radio. So I had an interesting start to my morning. What happened? Garbage truck picking up garbage, as they do. And uh, kind of noisy, and my alarm clock's going off at the same time, too. And so, like, I don't know what it was that made me look out the window. I don't know what it was that made me look out the window, but I peek over the window, and there's the garbage truck going around, and there's sort of like a, a mom with her kid in a stroller, and, you know, just usual type of, I guess, Thursday morning things that one sees. And then I'm like, hey, there's a dog there. Does that dog have an owner no no dog no no owner no one and um just sort of like wandering around but then i recognize it you know from the dog park and this is like i guess kind of an older dog that's sort of blind and uh so like i basically run out into the street in my pjs and uh attempt for the next half hour to to catch this dog and i know the dog's name so i when i call it it comes but then when I try to sort of like reach out and maybe sort of like grab onto his collar, uh, the dog snaps at me and runs away. And so I'm just like, oh, so I'm chasing this dog around, you know, but not chasing, chasing because it's a fast dog. It's like a Springer Spaniel. There's no way I'm actually going to physically catch it if it wants to not be caught. And I'm sort of like wandering around telling cars to get out of the way and sort of following after this dog for what seems like an absolute eternity this morning. Yeah. And, and, and managed to sort of like follow the dog slash chase the dog slash have the dog come to me over and over again. Cause I know it's name. So it trusts me a little bit, but then sort of like not enough to let me get near and snap at me. So like, and dogs clearly scared. And so I'm, I'm calling after the dog and the dog sort of comes up to me and then runs away it comes up to me and runs away. And we're all over the place. There's cars everywhere. It was quite an adventure, quite an adventure. It really was. And I'm like, what am I going to do? Because eventually, eventually I got to, I got to go to work and, but I'm not leaving this dog out here in the street to get hit by a car. That, that's just never going to happen. But what if it, you know, gets out of the complex where I live and heads toward the freeway and then what, you know, then what? And kind of crazy, crazy ass morning. And then, and if you are the type of person that's compassionate about dogs, then I almost guarantee you've had a similar experience to this one where you see a dog out, you know, you see a lost dog and you're trying to catch it and you see, it and like eventually the dog posts up in this one neighborhood, uh, this one part of the neighborhood and starts barking. And I'm like, Oh wait, no, no. I think, I think the owner lives here. I think the owner lives here, but I'm just going to ring the doorbell. Now, I ring the doorbell. And the owner comes to the door. He's like, oh, there you are. Come right in. I was like, oh, how could you? Like, God only knows what could have happened to your dog. I'm like, cool. Thanks. I was like, oh, man. Yeah, Rough start to the day. And now, the iHeartRadio Weekend Sports Time Capsule. In 1875, the Harvard-Yale game is the very first college football contest with uniforms. In 1951, New York Yankee catcher Yogi Berra wins his first of three MVP awards. This week in sports history in 1953, U.S. District Judge Grimm rules the NFL can black out TV home games. In 1970, Tom Dempsey of the New Orleans Saints kicks an NFL then-record 63-yard field goal. This week in sports history in 1982, a boxing match held in Las Vegas, Nevada, ends when Ray Mancini defeats Dooku Kim. Kim's death on November 17th leads to significant changes in the sport. In 1991, Paul Coffey sets an NHL defenseman scoring mark with his 311th goal. And this week in sports history in 1995, Dan Marino breaks Fran Tarkington's NFL all-time passing yardage mark of 47,003 yards. That's your iHeartRadio Weekend Sports Time Capsule. Now, a year in rock spotlight. 
1975. In November, Queen's fourth album is a worldwide smash with the single Bohemian Rhapsody. It hits number one in the UK and number four in the US. Fast forward to December, Bob Marley and the Whalers released their live album recorded at two concerts in London in July. And Paul Simon has a number one album with Still Crazy After All These Years. The album produces four top ten hits. I'm on the bus, bus. You don't need to discuss much. Just drop off the key and get yourself free. Keep listening to iHeartRadio for more from 1975. Coming up. Like most kids from a privileged white upper middle class suburban background, for a significant portion of his childhood, he was pretty convinced he was down. AD on the radio. So have you ever had something happen to you like that, Funkhauser, where you've been chasing yeah. after a lost dog and, and they, the owner, oblivious to the fact that it's been gone, like, oh, there you are. It's like your dog almost died like 15 times in the last 20 minutes and you don't seem to register that. I mean, like, uh, yeah, now, it, it, it's a really weird contradiction, contradiction that you get into because, like, look. Not everybody feels about dogs the way Funkhauser and I feel about dogs, which is they're family members. They really are. But when you look at the number of dogs that are in shelters, that are looking at the potential of being put down, like any dog that gets a home is a good thing. But a lot of the time, I'm just like, come on, man. you got to be better than that. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy the way some people sort of like, I, I don't know, it's like the disdain for them. Like, oh, well, you know, let them out into the world and if something happens, it happens. It's God's will or, or whatever the hell it is that goes through their heads when, when this sort of thing happened. You've had something like that happen to you? Yeah, I had an ex-girlfriend that kept the dog because she had such a bad time returning it. The guy's like, thanks. She's like, you know what? Thank you. I'm keeping him. Yeah. Yeah. And the uh, the the owner didn't chase after her. Nope. Yeah, your problem now. Ugh. Lame hate people. Lame. Hate people. People suck. But you know, it's one of those things. Like I think about this all the time when I see a homeless person with a dog. Where I'm just like, if you can't look after the yourself, you can't look after a dog. Don't get a dog if you're homeless. But then, who knows how they ended up together. Who knows how they ended up together, and maybe the dog was on the street and found a person that was on the street, and at the very least, they have each other, you know? Like, it's a weird dichotomy where you don't know the whole situation, so you can't judge. Well, I I can judge fine with my neighbor that just, you know, sort of let her dog out and didn't seem to mind uh, at all afterwards. I I judge the hell out of that. But when I see a homeless person with a dog, I'm not sure about how that goes. Like, one time, one time, I see this dog... Uh, walking down the sidewalk, crowded, crowded intersection. And I'm like, oh no, I gotta, I gotta do something. There's no leash. There's no owner inside. I gotta, I gotta catch the dog and, and do whatever I'm going to do with it. And like, I go up to the dog. I've almost got its collar and across the street, a homeless guy goes, leave him alone. Leave my dog alone. I was like, oh, okay. Well, it has a person. And then uh, quick as a flash, the dog runs through traffic and gets back to its homeless owner. And I was just like, uh, all right. But I, I, don't know what, I don't know what to do in that situation. I had a dog that lived across the street that looked like my dog a little that would uh-huh. come over last summer and yeah. just antagonize my dogs. If I left the door open, the, uh-huh. you know, it's like dog owners that left the dog off a leash and left the door yeah. open and just don't uh-huh. care. Dogs over like... You punking my dogs going, what? Come outside. What? Yeah. And and the kicker is the dog had the same exact name as my dog. So oh, when really? they start yelling for the dog, my dog's like, what? I want to go. Huh? <laughs> oh, man. It's a tough one. It, it really is. And you know what? The deeper we get into it, as much as dog's been man's best friend for, well, since the Stone Ages, 
as much as dogs dogs have evolved to the point where they are dogs are the most successful example of evolution on the face of the planet just because they've evolved to the point where they become indispensable to the dominant species like what other animal i mean cats i suppose but what other animal is so consistently viewed as a family member in this world answer almost nothing a dog is unique. A dog is amazing. A dog is a wondrous thing. A dog, if you ask me, is the single greatest piece of proof or the, the closest thing that we've got to proof of the existence of God. A dog really is. And it's not just because I'm one of those conspiracy theorists that says, ha, 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 D-O-G spelled backwards is, you know. No, look, it's this thing that's been put on earth. Its function in life is to love us and to serve us. To give us companionship. A dog is more in tune with human emotions than any other animal on the face of the planet. Up to and including uh, supposedly our closest animal relative, monkeys, gorillas, apes, things like that. A dog is more in tune with a human being's emotions than any other animal on the face of the planet. And all they want to do is make sure you're happy. You want to be a good friend? Look at how your dog treats you. And then go out to the world and try and replicate that. You can't because dogs are a magical, wondrous thing that just wants to be your friend and make you happy. Don't want anything from you. Not trying to get you to cover a shift. Not trying to get you to you know, do something you don't want to do in bed. Not trying to get you to do the, uh, the laundry that you don't want to do. Not nagging at you to do the chores. Not telling you to pick up the kids. Not telling you to... Do... No. A dog just wants to be your friend. A dog just wants your affection. A dog is a truer and more dedicated friend than any human being will ever be. And if you don't consider the fact that this wondrous thing wound up on earth to be an indicator that something or someone out there is looking out for us by providing us with this wondrous thing that is a dog, then, well, I don't know what more you're looking for. I really don't. But, uh, yeah. I got nowhere to go with this. Just dogs are amazing. And I wish people treated them better, more consistently across the board. I wish everybody treated their dogs like Funkhauser treated his dogs. I really do. All right, then. Anything to add about dogs, Funkhauser? Just Roy on Twitter says, crazy guy chases dog in pajamas. Houston screams at cars incoherently. <laughs> Tune in at six for the story. Yeah, that, that, uh, that would be the local headline around here. <laughs> Thank you, Roy. Thank you for putting such a lovely spin on my act of compassion and animal animal advocacy. Thanks. Thanks for that. And you know what? That's just the way it'll be viewed, too. Like the woman who came to the door, you know, I'm in my pajamas and, uh, you know, not looking so hot because I, I like I've been up for a whopping. I don't know. Like the first thing I saw this morning was a dog and I ran downstairs, you know, threw some shoes on to try and catch up with it. So, you know. I don't know how I looked. Not good, I'm guessing. You know, not together, not sane, not... I would imagine that the way I appeared this morning, wandering the streets in my pajamas... And by the way, my pajamas aren't exactly a snug fit. I'm very sure that as I was bending over, as I was bending over, being like, Come here, boy. Come here. Come here. Come here. As I was, like, leaning over to try and get on eye, you know, eye level with this dog. And so I could sort of, like, coax it in. Very sure that my butt was hanging out of my PJ pants. So I might have indecently exposed myself to the mom walking the kid in the stroller earlier just because I was trying to rescue a dog. So, yeah, that, that knowing the way things work out, knowing how the dominoes tend to fall, knowing how the fickle finger of fate tends to point, I would imagine I'm probably going to get arrested for indecent exposure because I tried to do the right thing by a dog when its owner couldn't. Uh, that's no good deed goes unrewarded. Blech. What the hell is going on in the news today, Funkhauser? Well, today's show is called The Christ Cup Part 2. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In response. Well, not in response. It's kind of a subtle dig, but in response to uh, the whole situation with the Starbucks coffee cups. Another place where you go to get delicious coffee to start your day has a has a significantly more Christmassy cup. Now it's a cup that they've been rocking for a long time, but they're certainly riding the wave of a of the the uh, the Starbucks Christ Cup publicity into a couple more sweet sweet coffee sales I, I would imagine and we'll go through which company that is in just a little bit <laughs> how are you by the way still got this lingering cough <laughs> yeah. yeah other than that I'm good things are good 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 uh, yesterday was Veterans Day yeah yep yesterday was Veterans Day 
Donald Trump offered his thanks to our men and women in uniform as long as they did not get captured. <laughs> oh, gosh. Kim Kardashian also sent out a message of thanks to people on Veterans Day. Kim Kardashian sent out a message of thanks to all the men and women who make her dog feel better when it gets sick. Her words, not mine. <laughs> we had a cool Veterans Day show. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. We had a, a real live veteran on the show. And I thought it was so cool. I thought it was so cool that Dave Hines was on. And if you missed the show, check out the podcast because he did a really, really great job at explaining what it was like to be in the army and what it was like once he got out of the army and how the VA is effed and needs fixing, but at the same time is filled with people that want to serve our veterans. You know, it, it's interesting because there's a lot of people that have never been in the military that love to put an overly dramatic spin on a lot of things because it works well for ratings. A lot of talk radio hosts, I know this, like these people are heroes and we're not looking after them. And you know what? They're right. These people are heroes and we are not looking after them. But kind of makes you climb down off of your high horse when you got someone in the studio who is a hero and manages to be more relaxed about the situation than you do on a regular basis. It was it was kind of an illuminating thing to have Dave Hines on the show. One thing that I thought was really kind of cool was how he was saying, you know, really, in the military, in the military, we have love for one another. The troops have love for one another, and the best support we get is from other members of the military. And he put it in such a good way. And my, I remember my grandfather telling me, uh, well, I, I remember my grandfather relaying this story about his experiences in the Second World War. He said, really, you know, when you, when you go out there and you're in the Army or whatever branch of the military you're in and you see active duty and you see combat and you're fighting for something, you can be told that you're fighting for your country. You can be told that you're fighting for freedom. You can be told that you're fighting for the people back home. But really, in that moment, you're fighting so you and your buddy can get home for dinner. Really, you're just looking out for one another, and that's what it becomes in the moment. And he was like that attitude of trying to keep your friend alive, trying to keep your friend alive really sort of translates once you get out of the military as well. And I found that to be super encouraging. I found that to be super encouraging. And you know what? People that aren't in the military that haven't been veterans can try and speak to their experience. And anyone that tries to empathize, anyone that tries to put themselves in the shoes of a veteran and try and make things better for the veteran, that's obviously an amazing thing to do. But the people I think that understand veterans the best are other veterans. And one thing that was made really clear by Dave Hines yesterday that I thought was great and interesting is that they can support each other in a way that we as civilians can't. I think that's fantastic that that exists. And I also think that, hey, you know, because we can't support you in that way, if you're a veteran, if you are a veteran and you are in some way, shape or form supporting other veterans, if that just involves talking one on one with someone that was a friend or someone that had an experience they're having problems with or someone that's dealing with PTSD or someone that's try having problems finding a job. If you're a veteran and you're supporting another veteran in that way, in a way that I can't. Let me just say, your next root beer is on me. It really is. So thank you. Thank you so much, not only to our veterans, but also to the veterans that support other veterans in a way that, well, people like Funkhauser and I, who have not been in the military, can. Can't support them the same way you do, but would like to offer my support to you. Here, I'll pick up the tab. You guys go out, do what you got to do, figure it out, and anything we can do to help, we will. And we'll we'll talk to you of, every day. That We'll talk to you every day. Yep. And we'll let you know that in any way you want, in any way we can, we got your back. We got your back. All right, then. What else? We got you, brah. Uh, more news. Donald Trump says if he's elected president, we'll all be saying Merry Christmas again. Yeah. I saw that. Do you say Happy Holidays? Uh, yeah. yeah I keep everything kind of the same. Hey, have a good, good one this, this time. Have a good one. Have See, a good like, thing. I grew up saying happy holidays, not out of any sort of like deference to other people's religions, but it was just like, hey, that covers everything. Because, you know, the holiday season, you got Thanksgiving and New Year's and Christmas and then whatever else gets celebrated. I don't know, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, some form of a bizarre satanic sex ritual, whatever the hell it is you're into during the joyous freaking Yuletide season when you go over the river and through the woods to enjoy yummy turkey and palpable tension between you and the relatives that you secretly despise but put up with twice a year. I figure saying happy holidays kind of covers all of it. And it wasn't because like, you know, 
I was trying to, trying to take the Christ out of Christmas. That's just, it's an expedient way of wishing someone a good season. You know, from October 31st to January 1st, a lot of things happen, and this covers it all. Happy holidays. But yeah, Donald Trump says if he's elected president, I'm not going to be able to say that anymore. I'm going to be saying Merry Christmas. Oh, and if he's not, I guess it's Feliz Navidad from here on out. I don't know. <laughs> there, there was just a, an SNL cut for time segment that went viral yesterday uh, of, of Donald Trump. You got to see it. It's, it looks like old school SNL. Do you want to play it? Do you have the audio? No, you can just go find it. Uh, All right. <sighs> the Christ Cup Part 2. Which coffee company is riding the Starbucks wave of negative publicity by crazy, insane right-wing pastors that operate off of an iPhone and the interwebs into a little extra sales? The coffee company we're going to talk about next. Thanks for hanging out. I'm Melody Burkett. Presidential candidate Marco Rubio says deportations are absolutely a part of his plan to tackle illegal immigration, but not every one of those illegal immigrants will be sent out of the country. I do not believe you can round up and deport 11 million people, especially people that have been here 15 years, have not otherwise violated the law. Uh, can pass background checks and so forth. Donald Trump recently said that he'd build a deportation force to humanely remove illegal immigrants from the country. In an interview on Fox News, Senator Rubio remarked that immigration policies are revised so that the ability to stay in the country is merit-based rather than family-based. Parts of the nation's midsection are dealing with some nasty weather. The Witch of November is blasting the upper Midwest and Ohio Valley with fierce, gusty winds. The powerful weather system blew over semis, damaged homes, and knocked out electricity to thousands of people in Iowa, Missouri, and Nebraska yesterday. This is USA Radio News. I'm Melody Burkett. The holidays are here again with parties, family gatherings, and plenty of picture taking. And you want your hair to look its very best when you're all dressed up, right? With the help of Ovation Cell Therapy, you can look your best this holiday season. Ovation Cell Therapy's protein and amino acid treatment nourishes the hair and scalp to bind and absorb into the hair shaft naturally for hair that is noticeably thicker, stronger, longer, and healthier looking. Guaranteed, or you'll get a full refund. So this holiday season, get the Ovation Hair Care Holiday Gift Set for your yourself and give a set to a special friend on your holiday list and and save save on both this year's holiday gift set includes ovation hair's three bottle cell therapy system thermal protection spray ovation hair wet dry brush and brand new detangling spray save over 50 percent on the ovation hair care holiday gift set they sell out fast so hurry to ovationhair.com and remember to select usa news at checkout for an additional introductory discount ovationhair.com trending in nba action the warriors top the grizzlies 100 to 84 golden state's down 9 and 0 on the year the only remaining undefeated team left in the nba and they have tied a franchise record for the best start in team history the mavericks beat the clippers 118 to 108 dirk davitsky had 31 points and 11 rebounds for dallas deandre jordan for la played for the first time in dallas since he had a change of heart he agreed to Signed with the Mavericks in the offseason, then returned to L.A. He finished with nine points, had 11 rebounds, and heard several boos. I obviously going to boo and uh, heckle a little bit. But like I said, I thought it was going to be a lot worse. But ultimately, you know, we came out here to win a basketball game, and that was it. Spurs beat the Blazers 113-101. to LaMarcus Aldridge in his first game back in Portland. Let's San Antonio with 23 points. In NBA News, Oklahoma City star Kevin Durant will miss at least 10, make that 7 to 10 days, with a hamstring injury in the NHL. The Oilers top the Ducks 4-3 in overtime. Imagine Eddie Garcia. We are Boston. Now, a year in rock spotlight. 1974. In January of 1974, the top selling album of the year is released. Paul McCartney and Wings Band on the Run. Bob Dylan, backed by the band, has his first number one album with Planet Waves. In February, Jersey City's Cool and the Gang have a top five hit with Jungle Boogie. New York City's KISS released their debut, which sells 75,000 copies without a hit single. Everybody says she's looking good. And the lady knows it's understood. Stray, 
In March of 74, Canadian band Rush released their debut album, Get a New Drummer, and go on their first U.S. tour. David Essex has the first of many top ten hits in the U.K. and his only U.S. hit with the single Rock On, which goes to number five. And Steely Dan hit the top five with the single Ricky Don't Lose That Number and have a top ten album, too, with Pretzel Logic. Ricky don't lose that number. listening to iHeartRadio for more from 1974. Coming up. iHeartRadio goes one-on-one with Mike Rutherford to talk about why he felt the documentary Genesis, Some of the Parts, was worthy of production. People forget from that one band, school band, you know, you had the Gabriel career, the Collins, the Mechanics career, and then you put songs together. This is the key. You see, you see a list of songs and you kind of go, In the Air Tonight, Invisible Touch, Living Years, Beko, and you kind of go... That's a great combination of songwriting, and so in a way this documentary tries to sort of cement that a little bit. Because I, I meet people still these days who say to me, you mean you're the Mike and Mike and the Mechanics? They don't tie it in all the time, so in a way this documentary, I think, helps do that. Keep listening to iHeartRadio for more Mike Rutherford and all your favorite artists. More AD on the radio. So you and I will continue to discuss the uh, saga of Christ's coffee cup. A little later on in the show. Right now, though, let's roll through what remains of the news. Super producer to the stars, Barry Funkhauser. What is going on in the world? Tweet Funkhauser if you want. At Funk FM is where he bees on the interwebs. I'm a tweetist. You're a tweetist. We're all tweetists. We're, yeah. <laughs> so what else? Uh, Jeb Bush is being ridiculed for saying if he could go back in time, he would kill baby Hitler. Yeah. <laughs> Jeb Bush, in a very unpresidential move, allowed himself to get sucked into the "Would you kill baby Hitler?" debate. <laughs> would Would you, Ad? Would I Would I kill baby Hitler? Yeah. Uh, I'd have to watch Back to the Future a few more times and try and get like some guidelines for that. I, you know, yes, in theory, but you know, time travel is not real. And as a goofy talk show host with about three listeners. I have the good sense not to answer that question. Jeb Bush, on the other hand, is a guy who's uh, getting ready to run to be leader of the free world, <laughs> went right for the bait. Jeb Bush being ridiculed for saying if he could go back in time, he would kill baby Hitler. Probably probably by boring him to death. Go on. Aww. Donald Trump suggested a boycott of Starbucks because their cups aren't Christmassy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not to be outdone, Jeb Bush said that if he could go back in time, he kill the founder of Starbucks when he was uh, a baby. Remember, order no whip. Right, yeah, no whip. Go on. President Obama now has a personal Facebook page. Yeah, yeah, I think the first thing he posted was a video on climate change. That and his other online activity has involved being denied, being denied friend requests from Malia and Sasha. They're like, no, <laughs> dad, ew. Blocked. <laughs> Go on. SeaWorld announced plans to phase out its killer whale shows next year. Yeah, yep. Finally bringing the Shamu thing to a grinding halt. What do you think about oh. that? Uh. <laughs> is that is that also a tense topic? If you saw a killer whale without a leash on, would you go and try to... If I saw a killer whale without a leash on... Uh, well, I can tell you this much. The phasing out of uh, Wales theme continued the other night at the GOP debate when Chris Christie was demoted to the kids' table. They phased oh. out that whale. <laughs> oh, <laughs> See what I did there? Yeah. I don't know. I haven't seen Blackfish because uh, I feel like it'll be too depressing. And look, is it natural? Is it natural for you know killer whales to be kept in captivity and be asked to perform tricks where they, I don't know, 
jump through hoops for fish and stuff like that. I'm going to go out on a limb and say no. I don't know enough about it to weigh in because I know people are very passionate about this. And if there's one thing I've learned is that you don't weigh in all ham-fisted, not being educated on the topic. But when I see SeaWorld, uh, it doesn't seem like good times for the whale to me. I, as, as far as the allegations of abuse go, I don't know. I do know that when there have been sort of like oil spill disasters and sort of like conservation uh, issues for the sea, I know that the sea world has been at the forefront of trying to do the right thing by a lot of that. So I'm, it's not like I'm torn. I'm just not educated. But my gut instinct is like, hey, as much as you might frame this up as conservation, this doesn't seem like a good thing for a whale. But then, I don't know. Would the whales be dead if they weren't in captivity? H- how does that go? Do you mm-hmm. know Funkhauser? I, yeah. I asked Canadian Jane last night. She said they, they do well when you release them back into the wild. I thought they'd be, you know, like, y- they only f- feed off of humans or something. Well, they, you know, they tend to do well. Yeah. I mean, you know, when that uh, trainer got mauled at, uh, at SeaWorld, it was just sort of like, all right, you know, they're they're not, you know... They are. They. What, what's the word at the front of the? What, what kind of whales are they? Cuddly whales? No. Pet whales? No. Killer whales. And um, well, there's enough in the name to dissuade me from ever getting up close and personal with one of them. I think I will observe that magnificent beast the way I was supposed to on TV on a National mm-hmm. Geographic special. I've certainly never felt the urge to go to Sea World as much as I've been around Sea Worlds, both in Texas and in California. It's never been like, oh, I got to go see that. And that's never been a thing. Do you thing. think Steve-O is going to hang up another banner, bruh? Oh, gosh, yeah, that guy. Uh, yeah. I, hey, look, like I said, there's a lot of people that are very passionate about it. And uh, the fact that SeaWorld is uh, making the Killer Whale show go away, uh, they're, they're bowing to the pressure of people like Steve-O. Like, honestly, I think uh, Steve-O could look at that and go, like, hey, I did that. I mean, with a lot of people, with a lot of other people. I think he could look at it and go, I did that. Hashtag we did so, it. All so right. I, th- I think if it was all above board, SeaWorld would be like, hey, you know, what you don't understand is this. Here's our side of the story. And this is why it's great to do killer whale shows. Not as not not. We're going to make them go away. Keep coming and buying popcorn. Ah. <laughs> so, yeah, go on. What else? Um, we're done with killer whales. Yes. We're done, yeah. We're done uh, with Crayola whales. is releasing a new new coloring books for adults. Yeah. <laughs> coloring books for adults. Pitiful, sad, pathetic adults. <laughs> Although, since the uh, phenomena of adult coloring books became a thing, have you been uh, have you been tempted to color? I colored yesterday, and I used oh, yeah? uh, Play School crayons, and I would like to write a negative review on Play School crayons <laughs> because they suck. Oh, Only buy the real thing when it comes to co- coloring. Crayons. Yeah. Off brand crayons, man. Like, only because I don't know about you, but I get bored of adulting on a regular basis. I'm just like, ugh, this all sucks. I hate having responsibilities. Being a grown up is no fun whatsoever. Taxes, mortgage, rent, heating bills, all the, I, you know. I would like to return. You know what? I wish I could just vacation to childhood. I'd like to go. <laughs> I'd like to be able to be, you know, as carefree and happy-go-lucky as I was when I was Come six. Come with me for to like, the land of curfew. Yeah, if I could just get a break from all that for like two weeks. If I could mentally be as carefree as I was when I was six years old for two weeks, I think I'd feel better equipped to deal with my imminent death and and all the taxes I have to pay and just, you know, I, I would be able to take all that adulting on a lot better if I could get a break from it every now and then. So, like, as much as I say coloring books, adult coloring books are for sad, sad, pathetic adults, it kind of appeals to me because you kind of want to, you know, reach that inner child. But you know what? Here's the thing. As I was adult coloring, I'd be going like, ugh, I'm adult coloring. There's all the porn I want on my television set. Why am I doing this? A porn coloring book, that would be fun. Porn coloring book. Let's do that. Now, a year in rock spotlight. 1975. In June of 75, the Bee Gees released the LP Main Course, featuring a more dance-oriented sound, and delivered three hit singles, including the number one, Jive Talkin'. 
July, Fleetwood Mac shake things up. They add Americans Lindsay Buckingham and Stevie Nicks to the lineup and have a number one album. And Wings released the album Venus and Mars, which goes to number one. Their U.S. tour features Paul McCartney's first live appearance in the U.S. since 1966. I love this for all we know, for all we know, our love will grow. That's what the man said. So won't you listen to what the man said? In August of 75, the Eagles' fourth album goes to number one and has three top five singles, including the number one title track, One of These Nights. And the boss, Bruce Springsteen, is featured on the cover of Time magazine, and Born to Run becomes his breakthrough album, reaching number three in the U.S. Listening to iHeartRadio for more from 1975. Coming up, iHeartRadio goes one on one with Mike Rutherford to discuss the art of songwriting. I've learned one thing over the years is that actually you can't control it. You can't force it. You can't analyze it. You can't worry about it. You just go and have a good time and mess around, and then something comes along and you grab it. You know, you, you, it's something intangible. And if you try and make a program on how to do it and do it better, you get lost. So I just, it's, it's like a free form thing, which you just, you can't control. You just let it ride or not ride. And if it's not working, then you just have a break. That's what I've learned. Now, someone who everybody wants to punch in the face. A.D. on the radio. So, as this show, I dare I say it, grows, as we pick up more listeners, as we pick up more affiliates, as we've uh, started being on real radios as opposed to languishing in digital obscurity, now, one thing that's happened is that the caliber of guests that we're able to get on the show has uh, gotten significantly better. We're now being pitched on people that you've actually heard of on a regular basis, and it's kind of freaking cool. That said... When uh, this show had exactly two listeners, there were some people that uh, stepped up to the plate for us um, and uh, and gave us interviews and spent time with us on the air when they really had no need to. And when there was a limited amount of benefit in it for them, to say the least. And, well, that would be folks like Allie Hayes and also Joanna Angel. Joanna Angel was on this show very, very early on. Joanna Angel, in case you did not know, is an adult film entrepreneur. She basically started the... Alt porn, I guess, uh, the the alt porn movement. She's got a company called Burning Angel, and she is a, a mogul like you wouldn't believe with the digital reach that is absolutely freaking incredible that she started out of her college dorm room at Rutgers University in New Jersey. And she stepped up to the plate very early on in the show and gave us an interview, which is why we are super stoked that she's going to be back this time next week. Next Thursday, Joanna Angel joins us. Is that correct, Funkhauser? Yeah, tattoos and punk rock, buddy. Be here mm-hmm. next week at this time. I remember when I first started watching the porn that she was cranking out, and I was just like, you know, it's very interesting stuff because, I mean, yes, everyone's pierced and tattooed and all that sort of thing, but it kind of looks like you're, I mean, beyond the sort of like piercings and the alt leanings, I suppose you'd call it, it's sort of like you're watching an episode of Friends, except, you know, uh, Ross and Rachel end up tag teaming Chandler. You know, it's just like that's what it's like. The whole premise of it starts off like, oh, this what looks like is literally going on in here. Uh, yeah, like could I be any more tag teamed? And it's like the uh, the thing about it is like it's just I don't know. It speaks to a certain generation <laughs> in a certain way that uh, is, is kind of cool and fun. Plus, you know, there's naked people doing it. So we're going to talk Whee! to her about that and the fact that she literally at this stage in the game runs a good chunk of the Western Hemisphere. She really, really has. Been become this like person of great weight and significance in the world of media and it's not only are there boobs involved which is always a good thing but even more impressive i think i want to talk to her about the fact that she literally started an empire from her college dorm room and it's very very cool stuff and we'll talk to her this time next week right now though Funkhauser, let's roll through what remains of the news what else is going on well groupon 
is offering a deal on clip-on man buns. <laughs> oh, yes, the clip-on <laughs> man bun. Look, if you're the person that does the man bun in the want first one. place. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> I was just about to say, anybody who gets a clip-on man bun is a loser yeah. of just incalculable degree and deserves to have their man card taken from them and never be given back. If you have a clip-on man bun, these were my thoughts, then, well, you need to tuck and swish around like a little girl because that's mm-hmm. exactly what you are. Meanwhile, I want Funk it for Christmas. Like, yeah, Funkhauser is like, already ordered. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Mm. Anyways. I'm yeah. going to get by you that way, for Funk Christmas, Houser. by the way. <laughs> a clip-on man bun? Yeah. Uh, well, I guess Millhouse will have a new dog toy. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, if you get a deal off a of Groupon on clip-on man buns, be aware. Be aware that two things are... There's two things you should consider if you're considering buying a uh, Groupon man bun. One... The savings, immediately offset by the skyrocketing price of fair trade coffee and vape pens, you hipster scumbag. And uh, second of all, be aware that if you spend your hard-earned money on a clip-on man bun, essentially the terrorists have won. Merry Christmas. Go on. I only get my clip-on man buns on Etsy. So Groupon, good luck. (laughs) A Chicago cop saved a person's life during his first day on the job. Oh, wow. What do you do? Stop him from moving to Chicago? It's not a safe place to live. Continue. Uh, A 100-year-old New York woman still works 11 hours a day, six days a week. Which is inspiring. Unless she's a stripper, in which case it's disgusting. Um, Let me ask you this. I would go. What what, what do you (laughs) think? Well, of course I would go. I mean, you know, I would go. Support our elderly. Yeah, it'd be one of those things where you're like, oh, the 100-year-old stripper is... Okay, that's fantastic. Good job. Oh, I'm so glad. That's inspiring stuff. Look at you rocking it in your old age. Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to be outside in the hallway throwing up about something else, but good for you. Don't forget um, to count the rings. <laughs> oh, God. Um, when do you think you're going to retire, Funkhauser? <laughs> what time is it? What uh, time is it? Yeah. I don't know. I hope I hope to be out of it by 60-ish, but it looks like we're going to be 80s, uh, working into our a- 80s, I think. Yeah. yeah. What about you? I, you know, uh, I, I would happily skip the next 30 years right now if I could and just move straight to Del Boca Vista. I'd be on that shuffle cor- shuffleboard court. I'd be eating the early bird dinners. I'd be... Crank, I like. I already am a cranky old man in my mind, and you know, I'm starting to feel like it in my body. So I'm ready to like just move down to Florida and live for nothing, and you know, brave the occasional hurricane so I can go eat full steak dinners at 4:30 in the afternoon. Like I'm over it. I, the sooner the better. I would keep doing this though. I would just you know uh, move keep down talking to into a microphone there. But, yeah. Hopefully yeah, you just, won't trade it in for a golden microphone. Oh man. Well, you know, when given the opportunity to. Uh, <laughs> Wait, let me try. Wait, hold on. I'm talking about moving down to Florida and, and, and talking into a microphone at age 60. Try, let, hold on. Let me try this out. <clears throat> what the mainstream media doesn't want you to know. It's not bad, right? I think I can uh, do that. It's still bad, but it's it's always <laughs> bad. <laughs> hey, you're talking about our coworker. Oh, yeah. He's part of the right. Premier Radio Network. He's still family. alive, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think what so. time is it? <laughs> what time? <laughs> Uh, and we're back to center. Go on. What else? Klein Kardashian thinks the government is covering the existence of aliens. Yeah, Chloe Kardashian has been weighing in on all manner of things. Chloe Kardashian, you know, like, let's say for a second that you had a great love of your life. You had a husband, a wife, a spouse, something of that nature. And you'd had your ups and your downs and some pretty dramatic downs recently, but you still love this person. So when you found out that they had a near-death experience and you rushed to be by their side kind of an emotional thing but you're also a person of some note and significance in the collective american zeitgeist you're a bit of a celebrity and so there's a lot of press there and you would think right you would think that if you think if you were in this situation if you were in this situation you would think that um everything that you said would have something to do with about uh, would have something to do with the health the safety and recovery of the person that you loved whose side you had rushed to be by not if your last name's kardashian <laughs> you just let's uh, scrape the bottom of the 
garbage can of humanity and uh, discuss the fact that Khloe Kardashian wants us all to know, amid Lamar Odom's near-death experience, that she think, thinks the government is uh, covering up the existence of aliens. Which tells us a couple things. Most notably that uh, Lamar's not the only one smoking crack. Go on. <laughs> Uh, the trailer from My Big Fat Greek Wedding 2 is online, and this reporter has seen it. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I didn't trailer... see the first one. Oh. So I you saw the trailer of... for the second one. He said a lot of questions, but... I'm well, not... basically, I, I, I never watched the first one, not all the way through. I think I saw it on HBO, like, and fell asleep to it one night. Um, and... From what I've learned about the first movie from falling asleep to it while watching HBO in a hotel room one night, I can tell you this. The trailer for My Big Fat Greek Wedding 2 would indicate that your enjoyment of it will be directly proportional to the number of cats that you own. Uh, <laughs> or iguanas. I think that's or the thing, too. <laughs> Go on. What else? Hold on. Breaking news. Okay, back to it. Scott Disick. Is that, did I say that right? I think so. It's Kourtney Kardashian's whatever. He uh, reportedly te- cheated on Kourtney Kardashian for with two of her sisters. Wait a second. Scott Disick pegged two Kardashian sisters? Yeah. Wow. Chris Jenner, the Kardashian mom, she must be really, really, really angry. <laughs> you know, that he didn't tape it. All right, then. <laughs> Let's uh, continue our conversation about the Christ Cup, shall we? <sighs> Oh, man, I don't know if you caught it or not. But, um, well, people are still whining about how the Starbucks holiday cups are not Christmassy enough. They're just plain red with a green Starbucks logo on it. So it's either minimalist or they hate Christmas. You decide. Or, you know, you can just get a life and then live it. But last week, Dunkin' Donuts released their holiday cup, which is white and has the word joy on it in red cursive writing surrounded by snowflakes and evergreen design. So, yeah. Suck on that piece of Christmas, Starbucks. Apparently, it's the same cup that they use every year around the holidays. But did you notice in the past? Who, me? Yeah, you. Did I notice what, the coffee cup thing? Have you ever paid any attention to the Dunkin' Donuts coffee cup in the past? Dunkin' Donuts? No. Yeah, no. I thought they were plain white cups, but... Yeah, no, we never noticed. Dunkin' even released a statement saying, quote, For many years, Dunkin' Donuts has served coffee in festive cups featuring the word joy as part of our annual celebration of the season and holiday offerings. They say it's meant to reflect, quote, the happiness and the spirit of the holiday season in a way that resonates with our guests. So, yeah, the cup might not be new, but Dunkin' Donuts is clearly hoping to get a little press out of all the fake outrage over the Starbucks cups. The fake manufactured outrage, which, as we were discussing the other day, is big business. And, like, the Josh Feuerstein, I don't know, whatever that moronic internet minister is, whatever, the, however the hell you pronounce his hateful moron lame brain name. He's basically, I think, setting himself up to try and be the next generation's Ann Coulter. And, like, folks like that, they make a really tidy living off of inflammatory sound bites. Like, we were discussing this the other day on the show. My favorite Ann Coulter quote is, God gave us the earth. We have dominion over the plants, the animals, the trees. God said, earth is yours. Take it. Rape it. It's yours. So, yeah. Ann Coulter, when she wrote that speech, the, the thought process goes something like this. Like, well, hmm, let's see. Let's, uh, let's upset the tree huggers. We can do what we want with the earth. No, 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 no. God said we can do what we want to the earth. Yeah, when you throw God in there, it always raises a few hackles. That's another good word that'll disgruntle some masses and lead to web clicks, viral videos, and notoriety. Hmm. Uh, What's another word that'll do that? Rape. Rape is a great word for grabbing attention in headlines. If I can work the word rape into the same sentence as God, oof, I'd be onto something. I know, I know, I know. God says we can rape the earth. There you go. Fantastic. Man. Man, you magnificent bastard, you're off to the races. And as we discussed the other day on the show, you drop a sentence like that on the world, it goes viral, and all of a sudden your price to speak at gun rallies goes up just in time for Christmas. And this is probably, this is why I'm probably going to be driving a 10-year-old car for the rest of my life. This is probably why I'm never going to be able to match bank accounts with the Coulters and I'm sure this... Oh, yay, my computer works again. This is why I'm never going to be able to match bank accounts with um, folks like Josh Feirstein and Ann Coulter. And I just, I can't work up the right, I can't work up the righteous indignation so I can cash in. It's just not me. It's just not me. 
I can't with a straight face and fake sincerity for ratings and web clicks suggest that walking into a Starbucks with a gun and saying my name is Christmas is anything other than a waste of time. I can't trivialize spirituality, faith, and religion and what Jesus died for by comparing crucifixion to coffee cups. And even if I could, I don't have a DVD or t-shirts to hawk or a donation page to profit off of the moron web traffic that it generates. And I can't be little people who love God or the earth by throwing those words together in the same sentence with a word rape designed to get me conservative talk show airtime but you know what i am dedicated to the truth and i've got you so i think it's all going to work out thank you so much for hanging